very good morning to you. My name is Daniel Wahome and welcome to Sports Check on this Monday morning. It's the fourth day of October 2021. It's a day when the Cabinet Secretary for Health, Mutahi Kagwe, has said that restrictions on movement, and this is to contain the spread of the coronavirus, has been extended for another 30 days. And the key reason is that the government would like to meet its target for vaccinations. So that means the restrictions of movement that's between 4 a.m. and 10 a.m. are in place and all the other restrictions that are there have been retained. They stay for another 30 days in the country. That's the information. And he was speaking today when he opened, uh, when he was launching a media portal. He was working together with the Media Council of Kenya. So there was a media portal for the, med uh, for the journalists to keep up with the information. That's all about the COVID-19 control measures and the spread. The announcement, and this is the news that has, you know, been announced this morning, a broadcast that was here on Good Morning Kenya just about, you know, half an hour ago, that the curfew has been extended in the country for another 30 days. And this is to help contain the spread of the coronavirus. And some of the measures that the government took, they were explained, including how a lockdown do not work in densely populated areas and why some of the measures that were put in there as a sign of relief by the government were explained. So we shall be having that story. Our reporter is Nancy Okware. She's going to be giving it to us. So welcome. It's Sports Check. It's a day when we have conversations around sport, the policy, the impact, and also speak with sports people. So this morning, we're going to have three conversations. One, Marsabit and football and how sport has been used for social change. We shall be having that conversation. We shall also be talking about boxing because last week the McLaren report on the rot in boxing about match manipulation and match fixing was released. It reads like, you know, a script for organized crime. What about that report and what it means 20 days before the World Boxing Championships where Kenya is going to be represented by 13 boxers. And then one of the most brilliant young stars in sport, Angela Okutoi. She is in the country. She's taken a short break from a high level you know, training center. She's at the ITF High Performance Center in Morocco. That is where she's having elite level training at junior level. She's going to be giving us a conversation about that. She's Kenya's top female tennis player. Those are some of the conversations that we're going to be having between now and noon. And also remember the one story that a lot of people will be keeping up with is the IEBC, they are in Nakuru, and that is where they're having the official launch of the voter registration exercise. They are targeting four to six million new voters, especially those who picked identity cards after 2017. So that's an exercise that's going on countrywide. The official launch is going to be in Nakuru. Let's get straight to our conversation around sports. And before we do that, let me introduce my sign language interpreter within these are. Her name is Suzanne Thuku. Sports, everyone knows it's mainly about competition, but in this country, a lot has changed. And got lots of props here today, and it's courtesy of people from Marsabit, where sport has been used for social change. If you've been to the museums, and there's always that, you know, elephant that's been put there, the skeleton is also there together with the tasks Ahmed, and this is a doll that represents Ahmed, and it's been made in Marsabit. And why Marsabit? Because 18 years ago, the Honor, Horn of Africa Development Initiative was founded by Fatma Abdikadir, and it was to use football to bring social change. She has now left the day-to-day -day running of, of the organization and handed it over to the young people. Fatma Abdikadir, welcome. Thank you so much. Tell us the story of Ahmed. I think like uh, if you don't know about Ahmed, then you're not Kenyan. And I'm saying this, uh, for me, I always say I'm from Kenya too. That is uh, the northern <laughs> no, Kenya. No, <laughs> devolution has changed everything. No, devolution has not changed <laughs> things for us. What? Really, we devolved corruption. We devolved more fighting. We devolved oh. more clanism <laughs> from tribe to clanism. And more, what do you call them, these contractors that we have <laughs> all over the place. So that is what we have devolved okay. as opposed to... All right. So the story of Ahmed now. Yeah, so Ahmed, uh, Ahmed had presidential uh, escort, presidential protection, and he was uh, declared a living monument uh, by uh, President Jomo Kenyatta then. Uh, and for me, uh, why I'm so passionate about Ahmed is he is our symbol of unity. Despite the fact that we keep on fighting, and I say we keep on fighting, all of us we keep on fighting, mm -hmm. left, right, and center. So one time is Borana Gabra, another time is Rendile Gabra, another time is Borana Burji, and the goalposts keep on shifting. And Mine doesn't shift. 
It doesn't. Are you sure? <laughs> if I kick it, it will. <laughs> yeah. So for us, uh, it depends on who says what, when, and where. And most of the time, the, politi the politicians will always utter their statements. And the common monarchy will not, you know, take time to decipher through the information. So they will fight on based on what the politician has said. Mm -hmm. And uh, on Ahmed, uh, my question to President Uhuru Kenyatta, and I'm putting him on the spot now. <laughs> Please, oh, yeah. <laughs> you, know, you want know, to have know, Ahmed yes. back there? We want Ahmed back in Marsabit, but on top of that also, if Ahmed had presidential protection, how comes we have mm -hmm. loved 156 people I do and know. there is no protection for those Kenyans? We'll come to la that later. Thank now you. let's talk about Hodi, which is what you founded to make social change. Yeah. What was the whole thing about you using football to change this story you're talking about, conflict in Marsabit? <laughs> I think for home, if you look at the way I'm dressed, mm. and even getting up on this chair was <laughs> difficult. <laughs> so playing football is just a no-no for somebody who is dressed like me. So mm. I never had a chance to kick the ball until when I was 25 years old. But as a kid, my dad would hold my hand when I was like six years old, and we'll go and watch football two kilometers away from home mm -hmm. at a place called Technical. We live around the town center. And every day we will do that for the World Cup, for the Confederations Cup, you know, for the Euro Cup, for the African Cup of Nations. And I used to watch the Katogo brothers who are risen but the Zambian team you mm -hmm. know and the and the team that almost uh, won the, uh, the, the 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 trophy for us as Africa in the Confederations Cup was it Cameroon yes against Argentina they against won France. against Argentina the, the final was the final was with France, with France. when Marvin and Ford died yes yes but we lost and so all of a sudden I really love the game but I cannot play because culture tradition and religion mm -hmm. dictates that is not a sport for me. So everybody will say, why don't you do netball? Why don't you do volleyball? But I was like, why can't I do football? And that is how I took up the ball and uh, created Shoot to Score, Not to Kill uh, with the young men then in Marsabit. In, uh, and this was immediately after the Torbe Massacre uh, in 2007. And uh, later, a little later, we introduced the girls team. But unfortunately, I really lost big time after bringing the team to Nairobi for a tournament. When I went back home, phew, all of them were kidnapped for marriage. Okay. <laughs> but that so was a, like a lesson to me like all right yeah. so the question that, uh, um for the boys who are there let, mm -hmm. let's go back uh because you start founded hodis 2003, 2003. Two, yeah for That's those four years before you started shoot to score, score not, to kill. not to kill what was the activities you were involved uh, for in? us like we were involved mainly in uh, legal aid providing uh, legal services because my background is law so i'm an advocate of the high court of kenya uh and i was trained uh I went to Moy University and I got my law degree. After that, I went to Kenya School of Law after doing pupillage uh, partly with Ahmed Nasir and company advocates and also Swale uh, in Mombasa. And while in Mombasa is when I interacted with a lady uh, called, uh, she's now deceased, uh, Madam Deka Ibrahim. And uh, I, as I was volunteering, I saw there was a lot of conflict issues in Wajia. And by then it was nomadic organization and I felt I think I can go back and do something at home in mm -hmm. Marsabit. But for me, it won't be these peace barazas, you know, meeting with elders. There was a missing link for me. The youth were not involved. But the people who are carrying the AK-47 and shooting and killing people are the youth. So how comes they're not at the table? So that was the question for me, and that is how I picked up the ball and I went to engage them. Well, and when we talk about picking up the ball, I'm sure, like every other community, this would have been the first one. That was the first one. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The other was, like, I will not be able to afford the normal <laughs> leather ball or, you know, the imported balls. Yeah. Within that, um, the first time I think I interacted w with somebody from Hodi was when you got an invitation. Uh, some members of your team got an invitation to attend the FIFA Women's World Cup in Germany in, two, in, two, France. in, in, Germ in 2011. That oh, was in Germany. Yeah. Yes. With Oma Obama. With Oma Obama, yes. yes. So, Sorry. how was the impact then felt such that they went, uh, Oma Obama, through the foundation, went all the way to Marsabit and picked your team and took them to the Women's World Cup in Germany? I think, like, for us, uh, actually, it's, like, long time, 2011. <laughs> Ten years ago. <laughs> Ten years ago, true. <laughs> and that is almost the same time when I also got married, because mm -hmm. I got married in 2010. So two girls were selected from Marsabit to mm -hmm. go to uh, Germany, Luxembourg, and then Germany. And they even went to the Adidas Center, mm -hmm. and it was really exciting. They, they had just completed uh, primary school. They had not even gone to high school. They know nothing about, you know, life outside Marsabit. All they know is being on top of a truck. Uh, we <laughs> came to look for passports and we were told, oh, you have to bring your parent, you have to bring a letter from the chief, 
you have to bring a lot of things. Mm. Literally, the list was endless. But thanks to uh, Dr. Yauma uh, of Sautiku uh, Foundation, she really helped us fast track the process, and we were for once treated like Kenyans. <laughs> <laughs> no, you are still Kenyan. <laughs> that is what we have to say. Yeah. Actually, the rep Kenyan representation are too from Mashabit. Yeah. What was the experiences? Uh, what was the, the experience? I one, mean, outside one, of the culture shock. The what culture shock, <laughs> one of them was a child mother actually herself. Mm -hmm. So she had to leave the baby with her mother. So like there was the whole thing of, you know, missing her baby mm -hmm. and then wing, being with other kids who are so excited, so vocal, so out there. And for them, they were shy and timid in the beginning, but they opened up later. And by the time when they came back, they were completely transformed. Literally, I could not tell who was my girl within the team. And thanks to Dr. Ray. Ah, now, and coming back, you mentioned, you know, you brought a team here. To Nairobi. To this Nairobi. was in 2008. Mm -hmm. So this was prior. So there was a tournament in Nairobi and we selected, uh, we had a team of 12 girls. This was my first team in 2008. And we got like the girls from three, three per school. So four schools literally donated the girls to us. We literally had to teach them how to kick the ball. They knew nothing about football. We had training for three weeks and then we came for the tournament. We were really beaten down, eh? <laughs> Eight zero, uh, seven zero. And I think we only won one against a team uh, from Italy. And when we traveled back, for us, the excitement was, it wasn't about the goals. It wasn't about us losing. We've already won because for us, it's those girls being together, them being from different traps. But also for them, as a girl, just kicking the ball and playing in an international tournament, that was already a huge achievement. But by the time when we got home, people were really mad. And they were mad because girls are not supposed to lift their legs. If you do, you break your virginity. Forgive my saying that. I'm not allowed to say it. But who said so? Who has proven it? And uh, I took almost four years until 2012 for me to have the courage to come back. But when I came back, I had consultations with the Imam uh, Jamia Mosque on the design of the uniform, mm -hmm. long sleeve jersey, hijab on the head, a shirt that goes beyond the knee, uh, tights inside. I'm literally describing the whole process of designing a mm -hmm. uniform now together with the parents, the teachers, uh, the entire community. And literally, we took over Marsabit by storm. Today, you go to Marsabit, people don't want to watch boys playing. They want to watch the girls playing. So let's talk about now the transformation from 2012 and how you used sport now to bridge, you know, and break some of, you know, the previous stereotypes. Considering that now you had to go and seek, you know, religious advice, even for your outfit, and how then it transformed Marsabit over, say, 2012 to, uh, before I even touch on 2016, and 2014 when there was a World Cup in Brazil and Euro 2016. What was the transformation? I think yeah. I really like the whole, if I can talk about this, this spectrum is, mm. it was like one step at a time, one home at a time, one issue at a time, one girl at a time, because you can't transform the whole society without dealing with that small unit of a family, then within the family, then within the community, and then now you spread outwards. And you need, you know, the religious leaders, you need the medics, you need the teachers, you need everybody to rally behind you. That was my first lesson. And I'm glad I felt terribly in 2008 because the lessons I learned made me stronger, mm -hmm. made Hodi stronger, made the entire community stronger. Today, people don't question uh, young girls carrying balls and wearing shorts and going mm -hmm. to the field to go and play. It's no longer an issue. And uh, we designed a program called Breaking the Silence. Uh -huh. Just for us to have a space to speak. For the boys, it was called Shoot to Score, Not to Kill. Because specifically, we were dealing with conflict issues, boys carrying guns, disarmament of the mind. Uh, and, you know, you play football, as you said, it's more or less like a game of war. For us, it's a game of peace. No blood is shed, only sweat. Let's, I mean, shoot to score. That targets the boys. Yes. And if you're going to play, for example, in North Hall from Marsabit, ideally, the conflict stories are, those are two different communities. Yes. How then has it changed the entire, you know, relations between the people in the different areas of, uh, I mean, the whole expanse of Marsabit? So Marsabit has four uh, sub-counties. So there is North Hor, the one you mentioned, uh, Moyale uh, sub-county, Laisami sub-county, and Saku sub-county. So these are the four sub-counties. And literally conflicts shift from one sub-county to the other. So three months it will be Saku sub-county. Now it has shifted to <laughs> North Hor, Laisamis, as we speak. Uh, and next, it will be Moyale, and this is almost the game, if I can say, in the whole of northern Kenya. <laughs> so it's Marsabit one time, next is Yolo, <laughs> next Samburu. And uh, so back to your question, uh, how, how 
Just imagine a young boy from Northor, mm -hmm. Gas in particular, who traveled with another young boy from Kargi, who is Rendile, the young boy from Gas is Gabra, and then with a, a young girl who is Gari from Moyale, uh -huh. and a young girl who is Borana from Saku. And these four went to represent Kenya, not just Hodi, mm -hmm. at the World Cup in Russia. That was in 2018. This year was 2018. Mm -hmm. And we actually went all the way to the semifinals, beating not not Kenyans now, but globally, all the teams. There were 78 teams. Yes. Yeah. So, so, mm -hmm. how, sorry. so how then do you work around to ensure that, you know, the four sub-counties all li uh, work, I mean, the residents have got harmony? Because it's one of the success stories of Hodi. Uh, for us, I think the story was also featured in a film called Soldiers of Peace. Uh, and uh, they have now released it online, so you'll be able to watch it, uh, Soldiers of Peace. And it was narrated by Michael Douglas. Uh, this one was done in 2018, and it was just the beginning for us. And mm. at that time, the game was just a normal game of football, but we had a third half. Uh, but, and when you get the boys to the field to play, they'll say, uh, milk ups, milk ups, vunja mugu, vunja mugu. <laughs> if you miss the ball, you don't miss the miss, leg. Miss the leg. Mm -hmm. And the whole purpose was inflict pain on the other tribe. Uh, uh -huh. And then I felt, okay, it's not just enough to kick the ball. We need to do mental disarmament. So playing against each other was not enough. We had to play together as mixed teams. Mm -hmm. So we don't take a team from Northor that is one tribe, or a team from Saku that is only one tribe, or a team from Lysamis that is only one tribe, or from Moyale that is only one tribe. All our teams are mixed. And why the mixing? Because then you play as a striker, you play as a defender, you play as a midfielder, you play as a goalkeeper, mm -hmm. and not as a tribe. You take the position for your team. And we win as a team, we lose as a team. So the whole thing of, you know, Vunjamgu... Vunjamgu just disappeared. Ah. And then we introduced another layer of rules because we are working with the kids themselves to design these rules. We took away the red card and the yellow card. Because if you give it the yellow card and say, but put a red, you know, get the red card. <laughs> like Zinedine Zidane. <laughs> Do the bath. <laughs> <laughs> so we, uh, and get a red card. He had a very beautiful career mm -hmm. and it ended with a red card. And when we took out the red card and the yellow card, we introduced green and white card. How do the two work? The two work in opposite ways. We don't punish violence. Mm -hmm. So even if you tackle somebody, we leave it to the kids to solve that. Instead, we reward fair play and peaceful acts on and off the field. You don't talk hate, you don't talk negative about mm -hmm. another tribe, on and off the pitch. And to a level where kids will even challenge their parents, don't say that about that tribe, because my captain is from that tribe. And you know, every time those conversations come up, everyone wonders, hey, what's happening here? Now, some of the things that have come already are some of the awards that have come your way. You won the Stuttgart Peace Prize in 2011. Let's start with that one. Wow, that was amazing. That was like my first one. And it actually came with cash money uh, that I used to buy a piece of land. So I own a little space in the name of Fatuma Abdukadir <laughs> Adan. And I, I had to fly to Germany. And guess who accompanied me? None other than Dr. Riauma. <laughs> she literally made a trip uh, to join me for the award ceremony. And it was amazing in the sense that, you know, somebody who knew me from Kenya and knew what I was doing was there with me. She speaks German and she was this big sister uh, who was there with me. But back to Stuttgart, the prize money was actually collected by, uh, if I can call it, like the city council of Stuttgart. So people, individuals donated 50 euros mm -hmm. each mm -hmm. and 100 of them. 100 or 1,000 of them, I don't know, it was 5,000 uh, euros. Euros, yeah. that, that would be 100 of them. 100 of them. And this was what was given to me as the prize money. Mm -hmm. And the, the, the trophy also, what they gave me as a symbol was like this funny dancing creature, which looks like my spirit. I'm a free spirit, so <laughs> <laughs> like that was really the best award, if I can call it. Because it was not the first really, but it was the first that came with. Uh, Akash Award. And also awards. Uh, let's talk about 2018. I think you made a wow. visit to this studio, but you had to... Like drag a lot of trophies. A lot of trophies collected within, what, three months? Uh, three uh, two, months. Yes. Three months. Mm -hmm. uh, so 2018, we win the FIFA Diversity Award. I was not able to go and collect it because... And FIFA Diversity Award, by the way, is the highest award given by FIFA. Mm -hmm. And we are the first organization as Horn of Africa Development Initiative to win it in Africa. Nobody okay. else has ever won it. So, to metoka league Marsabet, to metoka league Kenya, to metoka league. Yeah, Af 
tuko mm-hmm. Africa not tuko global sasa mko global tuko global mm-hmm. yeah all right that was the first that mm-hmm. was the first but the same night this was happening in london yes the same night i was reading another word in new york and look at this small village girl you know the nomad girl <laughs> from northern kenya i can't be in the two places at the same time but the picture the image for me was just immense immense in the sense that the, the second hour, so shoot to score not to kill mm-hmm. war and breaking the silence won fifa diversity award yes our other program called building resilient communities where we contribute 10 kenyan shillings per day per household out of that 10 shillings three shillings goes to education two shillings goes to health and five shillings they save and borrow as loans it's called hodi kusano kusano in uh, borana means savings yes so it's bufano which is a contribution uh, kusano saving like efano which is credit but it is different from the normal uh, cooperative Sako. or sacco no mm-hmm. because this one has a social fabric social welfare to it when there are weddings they will contribute uh, 500 shillings i think when somebody dies they contribute 300 shillings when a baby is born 200 shillings so we literally keep track of birth weddings death mm-hmm. everything is recorded and the women but jomo is like the pre- where one mama was arrested plus the cutter she was she had cut her girl literally i would say they killed her in the prison you know once your hair is shaved as a woman mm-hmm. not a muslim woman even for a muslim woman but traditionally it's only when your husband is dead this lady's husband was alive and her hair was shaved all the three of them and those ladies were a shell of themselves i went and visited them and i asked like what can i do and they said get us out of here mm-hmm. And I'm an advocate advocating for ending I won't say against end ending. of FGM female genital mutilation how do we do it bidding where girls are bidded and married when they are very young so we have to in, now empower these mothers individually the cutter individually mm-hmm. so we literally got her out appealed the case and she was able to get out not not as holy as an organization but the community also women actually mm-hmm. changed and got her out so you can imagine the anger the frustration and today that mother is a champion against fgm something else that i want to talk about now is leadership you have left the day-to-day running of the organization you just sit on the board after 18 years how have you groomed the leadership of hodi now i think uh, uh in one interview i said i'm uh, i feel like i'm an acacia tree which grows in a very you know hardship uh, area but you have to let seedlings grow beneath you like every other tree mm-hmm. if you don't do that people will come and cut you down you're going to die because of drought and who is going to take over after you so i started uh, grooming leadership from a very young age so the kids who are seven years when i started with them after mm-hmm. 18 years they already adults yes and they're looking for jobs but they have come through the holy system they know the in and out of the programs they will even tell you this should not be like this this should be like this and you have to listen to them mm. you have to give them a chance to lead make mistakes the same way i made mistakes and learn from them and that was that is, that is why for me it was easy to hand over the baton at, I'm, i'm still young i was what then i was 39 40 going to 40 but i didn't want to be 40 while i was the ed at holy I wanted to be 40 when I have done my 20 years literally and I'm done with that and then now come to my other 20 years and check what Kenya will offer and another life will offer. <laughs> well and when she says ED coming from the you know from uh, the NGO world a lot of initials are used so it's basically executive director. So let's talk about I mean uh, you could if you were to talk about individual success stories the same way Bob Mundro would He, okay Bob Munro wouldn't say this but we've realized is that products of the Madara Youth Sports Association are literally running football in this country you wouldn't notice it until you tried to pick them one by one what are the success stories uh, from Hodi in football out of football in football the women representative from Marsabet now mm-hmm. was my kid aha uh-huh. she was my goalkeeper and i'm so proud to see her running the organization now uh we have the woman the one in parliament now the, no the woman representative, representative the football one the fkf woman representative uh-huh. for the branch for the branch is a hodi kid okay yeah 
and she was a goalkeeper. <laughs> we traveled uh, quite a number of times to East Africa Cup uh, <laughs> with her, and I was shocked to see her on the list. And then she actually, they actually, her team actually won the election, and she's now sits as, she sits as a women representative. We have an elected member of parliament, a local. No, are they called member of parliament? MCA. 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 Liado, I will even mention names. Mm -hmm. This was our coach in Songa. Today he sits in the local parliament. So issue football, issue space is no longer in a background discussion. It's there. Uh -huh. uh, we're looking at a young leader called uh, Abdiaziz Boru, who is actually the youth representative UDA. Mm -hmm. I saw him taking pictures with Ruto the other day and I'm like, <laughs> okay. So we have come from... <laughs> <laughs> so we literally... Okay, like so this is a sports program, now we had it to politics. No, 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 we're not doing it to politics. I'm just giving you examples of where yeah, they, are, they are, and a lot of them will be seeking elective positions. A young girl called Fatuma Gufu, who is now in high school, uh, her fees are being paid by Equity. Uh, her story was run by BBC, and she said, I want to be the governor. And I'm really waiting for that young girl to finish high school, go to university, and come back and be the governor. Mm. Because then sport will be the talk. Shoot to score, not to kill will be the agenda in Marsabet County and the whole of Northern Kenya. Looking at the way for, uh, for, I mean, uh, f for sport for development in the country, how then can it be transformed, number one, so that it's self-sustaining? You don't have to you know, keep going to the european organizations or i mean partnering with them is one thing but you have dependency yes dependency so that you you are fully financially independent now you want to get the cut out of the bag for how many <laughs> not really not not in this way <laughs> oh yeah i mean what needs <laughs> so to be that done? will be my next venture mm -hmm. and it's a social enterprise it's called hodi capital and i will be the president of hodi capital <laughs> and hodi capital in essence is uh getting investment into Hodi as an organization, as opposed to begging for funding, mm -hmm. which is like writing proposal and getting funding. And how do we get investments? So selling Ahmed uh -huh. as a product from Marsabit. And we can actually, uh, what do you call it, brand it, uh, but also balls mm -hmm. like this. I know one that went for a million shillings. Yes. <laughs> Uh, the ball that you have here mm -hmm. so we are selling them and uh, we will have a catalog on our website for the items we'll be selling so this is one way of us creating our own income uh, but on top other than that also the villages the ones that have saved now close to uh, 10 million the 10 villages mm -hmm. we want organizations to partner with them investment you know partners who will come and partner with them uh -huh. in doing business so we are no longer in the business of waiting to be fed relief food. I know even now Marsabit, we are literally on the red a lot and uh, we have a very bad drought. Actually tomorrow we have a, a CSG meeting which is a county steering group meeting and every year in year out it's the same story, story. to Nataka Chakula. But the Hodi communities which is 152 villages have to take Chakula. Mukonayo ya kutosha. Mukonayo ya kutosha. Kwa sababu tunasev chilingi kumi kwa siku. That is Per household. Per household. That is uh, 365, 3,650 shillings a year. Yes. Then... And 50 of them do it together as a unit. So we started out uh, a small unit, like a uh, pilot, with 10 villages. Some of them drop out, which is okay. Uh, those, you need those challenges to be able to learn from them and then mend them. Four of them, I will say, are the top tier. Top tier in the sense that they meet on a particular day. Today is fourth. Yes. We have a meeting at two with Madaraka village. On 28th, we have a meeting with Imani Nagayo. So these are villages. And they meet on their own accord. They don't need allowances from anybody. You come, you come with your 300 shillings for the month saving. You are late for two minutes. You are fined 100 shillings. The meetings happen for an hour because time is money. Kenyans will, I mean, you, if, if you want to make money, then you keep, you keep inviting Kenyans for those <laughs> meetings. They, <laughs> they, will all, they will all be late, and at the end of it all, what happens? You get the funding. Proper football now. What needs to be done to have football so that any time there is, I mean, the FKEF are have organizing their league, someone has to catch a flight to go and play in Mars a bit. Really? I think, first of all, FKF has to have the face of Kenya. It's literally a composition of two, three tribes. <laughs> I mean, the history of... I mean, look... But, like, are they... The, are the history of Kenyan football Wahome, is around Wahome. that. No, 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 no. 
The is it only three tribes in Kenya that have legs that kick no, balls? The, th the question and I'm asking is, and this is what I want to talk about, is how do you then have active football there and then everyone... We have active football. Yes. But I have literally been begging even for the girls who have been, you know, shown on TV, who have gone to Russia to be included in the national team. Up to now, I'm still begging. I haven't got a chance. I don't know what we need to do. <laughs> Seriously, but do you know what will happen? Mm -hmm. They will come to look for us. But by then, our flight would have taken off Hawata to Pata because my girls will be playing in Europe. Allah? Yeah. <laughs> Tutaruka i Kenya eno? <laughs> no, <laughs> in Kenya. No, no, no. We have, I'm from Kenya too. No, there is not. No, Kenya ni moja. Ni uh, Kenya, Kenya. Even ni Kenya too. Me, I know this is KBC. <laughs> I hope I don't put you in trouble. No, but, but my Kenya is they this. They are watching my, you KBC. Yeah, my Kenya is this. That is why we are the Kenyan. My Kenya is this. <laughs> there are no roads. There are no schools. Literally, I have a school, <laughs> kids in Sukuroi village that learn under a tree. So. Wait. Uh, and what, you're telling me implement <laughs> CBC. <laughs> it's not possible. <laughs> so, this Back is where I'm football. coming. Back to football. Yeah. Having, I mean, through it, from, you, you've told us that the woman representative in the Marsabit County branch is from Hodi. How a you, Hodi kid. From a Hodi kid. She's come through the Hodi system. Then how do you have active football? In our right there Hodi. so for us we have like a nine month league that goes on throughout the year and mm -hmm. then we have tournaments and also championships so we have a hodi uh, horn of africa championship which mm -hmm. happens at the end of the year and the kids through the nine month program learn a lot of things so uh, we have uh, be yourself be healthy uh, know something about money mm -hmm. and know your rights so this is like a whole uh, four clustered mm -hmm. program and this is just one this is for breaking the silence, and we are doing this mm -hmm. together with Women Win, and uh, the module is uh, by sta Standard Chartered. Uh, and then the second program, Shoot to Score, Not to Kill. We are funded by FIFA. This is again direct. Yes. From Zurich, Zurich to an account in Marsabit. We account directly to Zurich. So this funding does not go through the branches. It doesn't it go through, through the, the federation. Actually. It doesn't. It so doesn't. it's direct. Direct. And they fund uh, around 126 organizations around the world in the same manner. So it's not just something special to Hodi. And we are in a network called Street Football World. Yes. This one has given us a voice. Once you hold each other's hand and you walk together, you amplify your little voice. So it's not just Fatuma from the village speaking. So it's Fatuma, Wahome plus, you know, your crewmen, mm. all of us together. And FIFA listens. Uh, um, Euro, what are they called? Euro, Euro 2016. Euro 2016, but you, they have the Euro, the, the organization listens also. UEFA. UEFA listens. Yes. So we've partnered with the UEFA, we've partnered with uh, FIFA uh, directly, and now we have created something called the Common Goal. Mm. This is, this is juicy. This is juicy in the sense that go and matter, the Manchester United. Yes, one matter, the, yes. The Manchester United. I have to repeat that. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> there is no Arsenal fan here. Okay, thank you. <laughs> I thought I'll rub it in. No. So, Gwen Mata started this fund with a colleague, uh, Jürgen, uh -huh. from Street Football World, where he donates 1% of his salary to organizations like Hodi, from the normal football to our football for social change. Yes. And you know what that will do? It will tilt the balance. There is so much money in football. Footballers are so rich. Look at Ronaldo. He has his own chef, how many vehicles, own trainer. But I love his discipline. And I love that he's back to Manchester, <laughs> although we're <laughs> losing. <laughs> but like, I, like, the world is changing. We have to change. The Kenyan football has mm -hmm. remained stagnant. Mm -hmm. We need to drain the swamp. Get rid of the entire team. <laughs> Put in a new team, fresh mind, fresh thinking, but people who also have go beyond ideas into practical ways of dealing with football, go beyond Nairobi, go beyond Kisumu, mm -hmm. uh, where else? Bombasa, Sika, Mombasa, Sika, wherever. Uh, just that. The rest, I don't think the rest, oh, and then Kakamega, yeah, only that. So where are the rest of Kenyans? We have 47 counties. Imagine if you made the 47 counties active branches, active in the sense that very grassroots, the way I have done now, mm -hmm. starting with seven-year-olds. Literally everybody is a footballer in Mursabi. Everybody. Now, do you know what we have done to the gut cutters, the ones who cut the girls? Mm -hmm. they, are also, they also now play football. So now we have even grandmothers who play football. Just for them to have a chance to not play professionally, mm -hmm. but experience the game, scream, fall down, 
but drop the blade in the end. Don't cut the girls anymore. And to close this, how then, then would you take the same concept around the neighboring counties? I know you border Samburu, you border Isiolo, you border Turkana. There is also, uh, where is it? Wajia is, Wajia. Wajia is the also there. Yeah. How then and Mandera. Mandera. So how then do you spread this concept across these communities and make football grow? Where we are now, we are going to grow horizontally and vertically, and we've already grown vertically in the sense that uh, Hodi uh, yesterday turned five years old. Hodi Ethiopia. Mm -hmm. uh, so why are we growing vertically? Because the issues in Marsabet are literally cooked in Ethiopia, or the issues in Ethiopia are cooked in Marsabet in terms of the conflict. Uh -huh. So Borana Gabra mm -hmm. are a cross-border community, uh -huh. and the boundary is just artificial for us, so they cross back and forth. And when there is a fighting in Marsabit County, revenge <coughs> happens in Magado mm -hmm. on the other side. And we felt first this football has to grow organically into Ethiopia, and we've done cross-border tournaments uh, supported by IGAD in 2010, 2011, Ethiopia-Kenya Peace Tournament. This brought together four teams from the Kenyan side, four teams from the Ethiopian side. This was a huge championship. Mm -hmm. And we had also the northeastern uh, counties in the follow-up uh, tournament. So the horizontal growth for me is now allowing this seed to grow everywhere. Let this acacia tree called Hodi grow everywhere. So it can even go to your village. It does not have to be northern Kenya. Because what does Hodi football do for you? Shoot to score, not to kill. It literally disarms the mind. And in disarming the mind, uh, it takes away negative ethnicity. It takes away hatred into a kid who is confident, a kid who is focused, into a kid who is disciplined because football needs discipline. Yes. You need to work out so Akunda Kitambi and, you know, lazing around chewing and smoking and drinking so away from drugs into active life exercising but also we check their results how are they performing in school if they're performing poorly then we have to cross check with the parents we have an education program that we run with mm -hmm. the schools so it's a whole intertwined kind of thing so it's not just football but because it's round it encompasses everything that we intend to do and i'll tell you how many this football is life for me there is nothing without football Fatma Abdikadir, the founder of Hodi, the Horn of Africa Development Initiative, an award-winning and well-funded organization working in Marsabit for social change. The little stories she's told about the amount of money that people are saving out there. It makes you want to say it's time to leave the concrete jungle of Nairobi, go live elsewhere where people still live as communities. Fatuma, thank you very much and all the best. She's now serving on the board. She was the executive director. That is where she started off. 18 years on, she's handed it over to the next generation. We'll be taking a short break now. And when we come back, let's talk about the Swiss, the Swiss science boxing because 20 days from now, Kenyan boxers will be in action in Belgrade, Serbia at the Men's World Boxing Championship. 13 divisions new, all of them with a new structure, but also on the background of the rot that is refereeing and judging in boxing. We'll be speaking with Duncan Kuria of the Boxing Federation of Kenya. He is their communications director. He's going to be telling us about the McLaren report the new weight divisions in boxing because they are now 13 and the heat squad and their preparations for the world championships coming up next <laughs> 